to the Kent Lap Podcast. Do you think that you're going to regret any of these decisions to shut down or pivot? And let me tell you why I asked that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like it's not super hard for you to kill something. It's not hard for me to kill something either. It's when it's time, that's an easy thing and sometimes even take a little bit of sick joy in doing it and, and, you know, but there have been times where I think I have killed things too early. Yeah. And I'm not talking about wood tax or riverwood cabins. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are you ma- talking about? That was about? maybe a little what too late. What are you talking about? Um, I'm thinking of a couple of projects we had going kind of leading up to when we when it was clear that the family business is in a real bad situation and basically clearing out everything um, so that I could focus on that and trying to fix that. And some of those things that we cleared out... Gospel were, business strategies? Gospel business strategies. Yeah. Um, is We could... Yeah, that's a fine example. I don't regret the decision, actually. But my point is... I, there was just someone on here yesterday who said that she believes that everything that she loves will leave her. I believe that everything good, I believe that everything that I love will either leave or die. That's kind of what I And think. I don't trust God, so we make a perfect right? trio. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so having said all that then, do you think that, is there any part of you that I assume doesn't wonder at this point, but do you think that a year from now you'll look back and re- and wish you hadn't killed some of these things I, or hadn't shut them down. I, I can't. I can't. And think, I sort of hate the question because it's like eh. you do have to decide. You know what I mean? You have to make a decision to move on. I can't look back at something that I've ever killed that way that I regret. I don't look back on any of them and say, "Eh." Including shutting the subscription box down the first time. I don't. I don't regret it. Okay. I don't regret doing it the first time. The first time around, and I thought. I thought so much about this. When we started the business, we built it on a poor foundation, technologically speaking, and from a process standpoint. I was having stuff shipped into my garage. I remember that. (laughs) I have two big freaking dogs and two cats and four kids. And trying to teach an eight-year-old how to pack a box you end up with a bunch of boxes missing things. That's what happens. <laughs> and um, the the website that we had was built, it was cobbled together to try to make subscriptions work. We tried to force something. It, it, it wasn't technologically sound, and it wasn't sound from a process perspective. And so... Uh, Our final shipment, December of 2016, you know, we shipped almost 800 boxes all across the country. We were only doing it once every three months. Mm -hmm. But I was like, dang, 800 of these. And, but it was a freaking nightmare. It was a nightmare. Well, four years later, I think about it like a toolbox. I have tools in my toolbox now that I didn't have four years ago. I have web developers now who know how to build a proper subscription website that does what we need it to do to avoid me having to do a crap ton of manual fixes on when things go wrong. I have a great fulfillment partner who has a proper bonded warehouse that we can ship product to. I never see the product. We have... Conklin Media, we have our partner who knows how to grow e-commerce brands. We have all these things that we have access to now that we didn't have four years ago. Yeah. That to me, it makes more sense now because I feel like we can build it with a stronger foundation. Yeah. And so, and we've not been trying. We, we, you know, we, we threw the idea out there when we had to cancel our first event. We just started doing these one-off monthly made south boxes so you can't go to our website right now and subscribe to anything you can go and purchase a single box 
Oh, okay. And then I have to tell you about it next month. Hey, if you want this month, you got to come back and purchase again. You know, that's that is is laborsome a word? If, uh, if it's not, it should yeah, be. It is, but it's laborsome. Like sure. that's a I got to go sell people every month, every month, and but without really trying. Without having the subscription model, renewing revenue at our disposal, without having Conklin starting to pour gas on the fire yet, without having a proper, you know, without having these things, people have bought boxes of the last six months. You know, I think small business is being decimated in the country right now. I think people recognize that and they go, okay, this is a good way to do that and also discover. It's a fun way to discover new brands, fun way to discover new things that are being made in the South. If you're into small business, if you're into Southern culture, if you like eating and drinking and tasting different things, you love handmade items, this is singing your song. Yep. And without really having any of these new tools set up or involved, we've been moving some boxes that oh, I yeah. go is a pretty good, it's a pretty good indication that once we do have a proper yes. subscription model that you can kind of choose your own event. You can, hey, I don't only want to spend 49 bucks. Oh, I want to spend 99 bucks. Oh, I want to do it once a month. I want to do it every quarter. We, you know, you can kind of choose a little bit. Oh, if you're like, interesting. If you're like a hundred bucks every month is too much for me. Okay. Well, if you want to do a hundred bucks every quarter, that's yep. cool. Or if you're like, okay. I only want to do four, we're going to give you some options and you're going to be able to control your account. I see. I, I feel really, really good about it. I'm just anxious to get it going. Sure. Yep. I'm ready to get it going. I like it. So you might, Made South may never do events again. I think the it, holiday it market. may do a holiday market. I think that, that to me that makes sense with the overall mission, and it makes sense. It's a natural tie-in that all of these people that we've been telling you about throughout the year, come meet them in person. I agree. And it's not like... And let's be clear on this. So when you say you're getting out of the events, but you still do that, I mean that's that's your big event, right? I mean, it's I've our been, big event. Yeah. I've been to some of those. Like we have three thousand pe- people came. To yeah, that yeah, you have done a tremendous job with that. So if you have that annual mm-hmm. one big holiday event, sure, that's when retail money is spent. Everyone's in the holiday mood. You get to be in person and. Once we get vi- this virus, the Chinese virus, out of here, the China virus, the, chi- the China virus, China, China's <laughs> um, gonna pay yeah. <laughs> in a Pe- terrific way. Yeah. People can come together, have a good time, meet these makers. All of that this. makes a lot. Hopefully, of Hopefully, you make yeah. a ton of money. Heck, you might even make enough money from that one event to support your family an entire year. But but you're not just doing that one thing. You're having subscription boxes around mm-hmm. it, and then you're you're using. The connections you have with distribution and so forth to kind of automate that as much as you can. Yeah. E-commerce, you know, e-commerce. E- you, you said that like a gangster. E-commerce. 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 You want to get into the e-commerce business. <laughs> you know how to, you know, put the gas on that. I I, th- um, I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, you do. I mean, you, you, even like Conklin aside, I mean, you. this is the space that you know. I see it. Um so is that going to be it? Or when you say pivot, is there some other things you yeah, have we'll, in mind we'll, to build we'll, around this? I mean, we, we will offer a couple of other different products. So subscription boxes are going to be the focus. But there will be, as part of an e-commerce effort, we're going to be able to offer people other things to buy mm, okay. that fit within the mission. Okay. So the mission is we support small business in the South. We want to highlight sing the song of whatever, however however you want to describe it. We want to shed a light, shine a spotlight on people who we feel like are making really great things in the South. Yes. Because we love small business and we love this region, right? Yes. Pretty simple. Subscription boxes. We also are going to offer three kind of standalone gift boxes. Okay. So the subscription, it's, it's, a little bit hard for me to communicate, but the, the subscription box, you have no idea what's going to come in that. That's right. That is a surprise and delight thing. If you like discovering new things, that's going to be awesome for you. Some people don't like, dis- they don't like that. They want to see something before they buy it. We will have three, in the future maybe more, but I think we're going to start with three standalone gift boxes that you can see what's inside them before you buy them. Mm. And so that may mean... That okay, Kent is into cocktails, and so Made South has a curated cocktail box 
And so I can see everything that's in here. Ooh, and this like is that. a great gift for Kent. Yeah. It's We're always gonna, available. It's not just available this quarter. Be, it's no, always available. They're always there. Mm-hmm. And so those three will be Taste of the South because people like to eat. And we, we surveyed our, our audience about this. We sent emails and said, take a, take a two-minute survey. Tell us what things are you interested in. And the top three were Taste of the South, which is all things eating and drinking, housewarming or Southern hospital. We're probably going to call it the Southern hospitality mm-hmm. box, candle, uh, coasters, a dish towel, handmade soaps. What, you know, mm-hmm. somebody buys a new, Hey, here's an awesome housewarming gift yep. and a cocktail box. Those were the top three. Interesting. So you get, we're going to offer a made South cocktail, box, a made South housewarming, a made South taste of the South box that you may go, Oh, Andrew, Andrew loves cocktails. It's his birthday coming up. I'm going to go pop on this. I'm going to have it sent to him. A little handwritten note. Happy birthday, Andrew. You know, whatever. So we'll offer that. We're going to offer what we call maker collaborations, where I'm an idea guy. I see somebody who makes something, and I go, oh, wouldn't it be cool if they made this? And would it, wouldn't it be really cool if they made it just for us? Mm. And so I'm going to a handful of makers right now, and I'm saying, I have an idea for a product that it's in your wheelhouse. You make, you know, pottery is an example. I love pottery, by the way. I'm obsessed with pottery. Really? Oh. Pottery. If I were actually going to do make something, it w- I would be a potter. That's what I would be. I've thought, wow. about, I've thought about taking classes. really have. Um, That'll give you some insight into the sovereignty of God right there. Probably, yeah. Clay in the, yeah, thing, clay in the potter's imagine, hand yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And plus that scene from Ghost. Haven't that seen was pretty that. hot. What? I haven't seen that. Is, Is that... he Mennonite too? No, he's not. No. He's sane. <laughs> anyway, Unsure everybody else who's seen one. them. Oh, that scene from Ghost with Demi Moore and, uh, gosh, I'm blanking on his name. He was in Roadhouse. When I said he's sane, I don't mean he's sane because he's not Mennonite. I mean he's sane because he hasn't seen Ghost, which I don't know what you're talking about. Is it a TV show? Or? <laughs> no, it was a movie. What is this? This is the scene. Is this the, the pottery scene in Ghost? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this, by the way. So Demi Moore. Demi Moore? Demi, Demi, potato, potato. He's making some pottery. Oh, jeez. Oh, the record player comes off. Okay. See, you're, you follow me yeah, now. Hold I'm on. I'm interested now. So, Patrick Swayze. Righteous Brothers. Huh? And I believe... More pottery. I forget the premise of this movie, but I believe that Patrick Swayze was her husband. Okay. Who died. Okay. <laughs> what are we watching? Oh, never mind. So, he's... <laughs> so, he... He just you can comes turn that back. off, Andrew. Thanks. Yeah, he comes back. Uh, I don't remember if that's that scene or another scene, but so he sits behind her, and like joins his hands with her, and they start working the clay together. Oh, now that's it's a pottery. sexy scene, I, man. That's, that's super. What I'm saying. I could totally get into that. That's what I was talking oh, about. For sure. Imagine you and your wife working oh, some pottery. For sure. There's going to be some baby making after okay, that. Okay, I know didn't what I'm think that was no, part of pottery no. making, but now that I... Okay, I get it. I, it's not part I, of pottery making. I was just making a, a cultural reference I whenever it. I was... Okay, I anyway. now understand why you have a thing for pottery. So I go to this potter that, <laughs> I, that you know, she, she doesn't have some massive following on Instagram, but her work is beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's really awesome. And I say, okay... Can you make a coffee mug for us? Just for us. And I have a little bit of, in, you know, maybe not insight, a little bit of um, influence. Influence, sure. Like, hey, could it be this way? Could we do this? And so that design is going to be exclusively for us. There's a candle maker in Charleston, South Carolina that we're working with that's going to create a candle just for us. It's going to be yeah. our blend our fragrance the 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 actual design of it is going to look different than all the other things but still be consistent with what they do as a brand and we'll be able to offer that candle we'll be able to offer that mug a few other things that are exclusive for us but we buy them 50 100 200 at a time we store them 
it's a, goes back a little bit to that second idea, but it's not thousands of SKUs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a few select things, yep. highly curated, but I'm buying that product. So I'm not, there's no, hey, if we sell 50, I only want to buy. I'm committing to buy product from you. Yep. So it's good for you. I'm supporting you. I'm going to tell your story when people buy this. And hopefully they're going to come over to you and buy more of your stuff. So we're going to do a few of those things. And then the final thing we're going to try to do with it is corporate gifting. I think that's a big opportunity that we've never really tried to do. I totally agree. But if, if, a, if a company, a Dollar General, a Bridgestone, a Nissan, a whoever said, we want you to create a custom Made South box for our 1,000 team members. And here's your budget. And we want it to be kind of co-branded. So we want you to tell our story a little bit of that with your branding of this box. We want to be able to do that. But it all fits with supporting small business in the American South. I love it. What strikes me is that your mission hasn't changed. Your strategy largely hasn't even changed. Your tactics have. So you're changing what you're doing, but you're still going about things largely the same way, which has clearly worked, and it's going to work, and your mission is the exact same way. I like it. But if we can can do those things, that'll be... If that business can do what we really believe it can with those different elements, and and e-commerce, really, you know, e-commerce is split up between boxes, subscription boxes, gift boxes, and maker collaboration products, all right? Mm -hmm. So if it's split over those three things, and then we have a corporate gifting underneath that, uh, I'll get a lot of rest. Yeah, you know, fantastic. I'll be able to rest and not be so crazy busy trying to seek out a million different things. Yep. I'll have three like Made South. I've got Eli Mace. I've got this other the sticker brand. I can do those three things and make a really good living for my family. And I'm not flying on private jets. And truthfully, I don't want to. I don't have any desire to live that life. But I can, I can support my family well. Have a ton of time freedom build a lot of really good relationships, have a lot of fun. That's what I want to do. Made South, Eli Mason. What is the sticker brand? Good Southerner. Good Southerner, yeah. which is... is is <laughs> Things that you do tend to work out fairly well. I don't know if you notice that. And if they, you know, and, yeah. and you're not willing to... And but you're willing funny. to pivot if need be. Yeah. So, But it's funny because I, I think that most... If people know me, they know me for the Made South thing. And it's the least successful. That's interesting. Yeah. Are you still doing the restaurant? We're trying. We're okay. trying. Yeah, I mean, it, okay. it is a, um, and, and that deal is, so I have a chef friend, Alex Ballou, who's at Dallas and Jane, his restaurant is slash was, it still exists there, but it's not open to the public in Murfreesboro. But uh, Alex and I become good friends. We have a concept that we think is awesome, and we want to launch it in Franklin. We'd like to do it in Franklin. Um, but we can't find the money for it. Oh, uh, okay. Can't find the money for it. And we don't want to go borrow the money. Sure. We, we, want, we want an investor. We don't want to borrow the was money. Was that the venture that you had the 40 investors lined up and the mm-hmm. someone who was well, willing? Well, so, that, I mean, it's an interesting story. So, originally, we were going to move his restaurant, which is called Dallas and Jane. It's in a it's a 50-seat restaurant in a strip mall next to a dollar store in a bad, not a bad part of town, but in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Sure. And he... He his food is beautiful, delicious. It's elevated. It's fine dining. And you know when I when I go there now, granted you could go you could go there and eat for forty bucks if you want to. But when when my wife and I would go there, we'd be there for two hours. We're gonna have a couple drinks. We're gonna try many different starters. We're gonna have dessert. We're gonna walk out at two hundred bucks. Yep, and. When COVID hit, the original idea was moving Dallas and Jane from Murfreesboro to Franklin because I sit on the board at Visit Franklin, which is kind of the tourism arm of Williamson County. And all the data that we see, people, people who visit Franklin and who live there, number one thing they want, more dining options. Interesting. It's the 13th wealthiest county in the country. And we have four upscale restaurants. 
the community is asking for more of that, but nobody's giving it to them. Hmm. And so uh, I'm still convinced that restaurant needs to live in Franklin, Tennessee. Yeah, it sounds like it, it would do good in Franklin. I, 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 I believe in it with all my heart. Now, when COVID hit, the conversation shifted a little bit to, okay, well, how quickly is the public going to be ready to go sit indoors for two hours and with changes in the economy, drop 200 bucks? Mm-hmm. And we said... I mean, I'm ready to do that. I enjoy. I still enjoy doing that with my wife, but no, I understand not everybody is. Yeah, and so I don't know that the wisest thing is to try to launch that restaurant in the middle of all this. Sure, that makes sense. Right. Did, did you have a lot of investors that backed out because of COVID? Then, oh yeah, okay. And they weren't to be to be uh, completely transparent. None of them were committed. Sure, we had a lot of interest. Yep. But nobody had said, oh, yeah, we're writing a check and, and we're backing out. Right. Um, but all of that interest was like, okay, wait a minute. Our business is cut by 40%. We're shoring up cash. We're not, yeah. we're not doing it. You want to you wanna open a restaurant? What? I mean, we got a lot of that. Um, so the, the conversation became, okay, well, we have other concepts that as a group we thought down the road we'd like to launch. And one of those popped out as... To, I mean, several people who are deep in the restaurant business have told me over the last few months, fast food is crushing it. You got I know people who operate Chick Fil A's; they're up eighty percent. Golly! And their 80%? dining rooms and their dining rooms aren't open. That's insane. Drive through only. Wow! Crushing it. Fast food is crushing it. Fast casual is hanging in there and doing and pretty okay. And it's like I know some guys who operate a really great fast casual taco spot in, in Franklin. And they're like, we're up 3% over last year. Okay. Fast casual, hanging in there, doing okay. okay. Fine dining, dead. Hmm. It's on a ventilator. And I, no pun intended, but. Why do you think? That's sort of surprising to me. Well, I mean, fast food. You can get it. You don't have to get out of your car. I sort of get that. Fast casual is sort of the same way. It's very uh, uh, delivery dudes friendly. It's very sure. sure. I can Uber eats it to my house. Um, if you want to go in, you might be that. You could potentially be there for twenty minutes, thirty minutes. You're not yeah. sitting down for two hours. It's easier on the wallet. So the spot that I love to go to for lunch a lot is Mojo's Tacos in mm-hmm. Franklin. They're in the factory. They sell four dollar fast casual. Yeah, four dollar yeah. Americanized tacos, fried chicken taco, hot chicken taco, uh, mojo fish taco. I mean, they're 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 great, but it's a it's a inexpensive Americanized taco. It travels well in a styrofoam box. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't have COVID. Um, fast casual is is doing pretty good. Yep. Fast food's crushing it, fine dining. Nobody, uh, n- not nobody, not enough people are ready to go sit down, spend two hours indoors, and drop a couple hundred bucks. It's just not revived yet. The number, how- one, the number one restaurant in the entire world is in Copenhagen, Denmark. They pivoted to be a wine burger bar. No kidding. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious how much of that is economic impact, which I suspect is the least um, least piece of it. How much of it is I don't want to be around other people, and how much of it is distraction. And by distraction, I just mean sports are down this year, and not just because they're politicized. It's because, really, you want to get into, like, it just has less, because of all the noise and everything else going on, something about sports doesn't feel as right as it usually does. So when it comes to fine dining, the reason I think economic impact is, I mean, there's a lot of companies doing great right now. And I know there's a lot that aren't. Yeah, but, but when it comes to fine ones, dining... But if you look at the ones that are doing great, who are they? Amazon? Amazon, anything tied to the... I mean, heck, we have a digital marketing firm over here that's busier than they've ever been. Anything tied to the internet right now is blowing up. Because internet shopping is way up. Right. It's been, fa- I mean, 
I was going to say I hate to say it, but I don't hate to say it. COVID's been great for Eli Mason. People were drinking more and shopping online. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. But outdoor products, sheds, people I know selling sheds, are having the best. Some of them are having the best year they've ever had. Home Depot. Outdoor people place. Home, they're doing, they're home, doing home Depot's projects. way up. All of this type of they're thing. Doing home projects. So it's not doom and gloom. So there's a lot of people that are doing just as good as these always have or better. So that's why I'm kind of curious on the fine dining. I wonder how much of it is. It just doesn't feel right. Well, like, okay. To so, go out and spend so 300 bucks. I don't-